Hi Joe, this is the last part of session 8 and again I was betrayed by uh, technology so we are just restarting this video again so everything is already uh, written down but I'm going to, to explain it so we're going to compute the expectation maximization for a mixture of Gaussians and if you remember what we need is to um, lie out our auxiliary function that depends on theta and theta t minus one. And this is just expectation of the completed likelihood, right? So note that we don't have any, any summation over here over our latent variables. We assume that this model is already complete. That means xi and ci are paired, okay? So we just uh, write down this, um, this form and we use the the multiplication of each of those experts with respect of the uh, of the indicator function of the ci uh, equal to k okay so basically we are just multiplying all the all the values and then we just apply the logarithm and we see that the expectation only um works with respect to this uh, indicator function because the logarithm it does not depend on ci right now, right? Because I am removing the latent part from this, this part over here. And the expectation of this uh, latent variable is, is just the probability of, of being, um, uh, of, of a particular expert of a particular Gaussian, right? And we call this the responsibility, if you remember. So it is the same, the same thing. So we can just expand this and it is the, the prior that we have, the prior for each of those uh, uh, particular Gaussians. So how likely it is to be uh, of, this, of this Gaussian, plus this, uh, this distribution. Ignore this for a moment, okay? So <clears throat> uh, when we need to compute the, the expectation step, basically, uh, we just need to compute this responsibility with respect of all the of all the data points. So I would call this um, responsibility R I K, right? And it is basically just the likelihood of the data given the the Gaussian that I'm interested in, and this will give me some probability. So remember, like this is a, a normal, and then I'm just going to multiply it by um, what is uh, how likely that that Gaussian is, okay? And since we want to assign a soft uh, responsibility, I just need to um, normalize these with respect of all the different uh, uh, distributions over here. Oh, sorry, all, like the, the values, right? Like all the different responsibilities. Um, so this is really straightforward, right? Just basically seeing how much uh, each uh, Gaussian uh, predicts the likelihood of each of those uh, data points and then just normalizing between those. Um, for the maximization step, what you need to do is now I need to maximize uh, assuming that I have uh, these responsibilities on this particular step over here. Now we can introduce my, my, my term in here. So remember like this is the Lagrangian with respect of the P or pi case, right? Because those pi case should sum, sum up to one. So I have this restriction over here. And what I'm going to do is simply take my auxiliary function and do the derivative with respect of pi k. So this is, const this is constant and we just get these two terms over here and we just um, solve for pi k and you see that we have one lambda over here. Now I just apply my, my constraints and from those constraints, I obtain that this summation over here is equal to n over n, so this is one. So finally, I can just find out that my pi k is the summation of the responsibilities over n. So I'm just seeing how, how much um, responsibility every cluster is, uh, is assigning to it. And then I'm just normalizing that over the number of, of uh, data points that I have. For the Gaussian now, I'm, I can just work with this uh, pxi given theta k. So we can just rework it and, and name it, for instance, uh, L uh, some L function, some likelihood that depends on the two parameters of the of the normal. And if we push 
the normal through this logarithm, we just end up with this, this particular shape. So if you go to the lecture, when we work with Gaussians, you will see that it is exactly the same thing, just we have this RIK um, as an extra term over here. So we can apply the same techniques that we use there. Basically, we just take the derivative of, the, of this function with respect of each of the of both parameters, and we just follow the same derivation as we did before. Basically, just do the derivative with respect of mu over here, and we just apply derivatives uh, in vector calculus, and we obtain this form, and we can just simply uh, find and solve for, for mu k. And similarly, we can solve here for um, the uh, covariance matrix over here. Okay, and as you see, we obtain mostly the same shape, just that they are weighted by this responsibility. So what we obtain for the expectation maximization is that we want to compute, um, according to the assignment of these clusters, uh, the responsibility of uh, of the of each of those clusters with respect of the data point that we have. So our mu is, is weighted with respect to that responsibility. And similarly, our spread function is also uh, weighted with respect of, of that responsibility and normalized through that. So this is for the maximum likelihood estimation. And for the maximum posteriori, we can do something very, very similar. The difference is that we will add um, the prior of the parameters in, on this likelihood, right? So before we were just computing the, um, the likelihood itself, See, now we will add this prior over here. So we just expand this prior and, and remember like we have the prior that corresponds to each of the, um, of the Gaussians plus the prior of, the, of, of these uh, pi k's of the, of the classes, right? Of like the, the categories. So our expectation step is exactly the same. We just need to compute the responsibility as we did before. And what will change is our um, maximization step because now we have some uh, prior distribution. So for this categorical, we are going to assume that we have a Dirichlet with some alpha hyperparameters over here because this is the conjugate prior of a, of a categorical. And then we can just simply expand the likelihood of that corresponds to pi k over here. So I can just work with this one and with this one because if I add these ones, when I um, do the derivative, they are going to be zero. So it, it doesn't matter much. So what we will have over here is that um, my likelihood corresponds to this form, right? I'm just taking the log of uh, this over here. So this is the responsibility that we have over the pi k's plus the log of the Dirichlet. And if you see, when we put these two together, we obtain again another Dirichlet distribution, right? So this is approximately the same up to some, some constant because I need to, to work with this beta to obtain the same uh, parameters, but in the proportion, it doesn't matter. So since this is a Dirichlet, I, I know how I can, I can compute those values. So you can use this information to just simply go and take the, um, the solution for the Dirichlet. Or if you want, you can just simply do the, the derivative. You do the derivative of this with respect of pi k. And remember, like you have to add this Lagrangian due to the constraints of the terms. And you will obtain uh, this shape over here. So pi k is equal to the, the sum of these uh, uh, hyperparameters of the Dirichlet, my priors. So basically, I'm just, uh, if you remember when we were working with the Dirichlet, these add some pseudo counts to the original counts. So instead of counting the data in, in this expectation maximization, what I'm doing is counting the responsibilities. So that is the big difference over here. And what I obtain at the end is that my lambda is simply the summation. So we obtain something very, very similar to, the, um, to solving categoricals. And the difference is that instead of having the counts, we have the counts of the responsibility. That's basically the, the whole difference. And for the Gaussians, we can do basically the same thing. Uh, we just assume some prior that, that needs to be a conjugate prior of the original. So we are going to select this conjugate prior as a normal inverse wish card. And again, as we did in that uh, lecture of the Gaussians, you just need to go and solve for this, uh, for this prior using the, the normal Gaussian. And you just replace um, your, your, uh, your mean, your, your uh, uh, sample mean by this weighted sample mean that we have over here. So basically we're just uh, using this uh, sample version. And if you see, it's exactly the same shape that we have 
when we solve for the MLE, right? It is the exact same thing of uh, computing the the weighted version of the of the of the mean, and we um, just push it into the same type of equations, and we obtain the shape of the mean that is basically a, a sum between this sample and my priors, my priors of the of the mean that I'm using, and the same for my my covariance matrix over here because I have my prior information plus this is k that is just the scatter matrix also weighted by the ris okay and this is how you will, will solve it and then just work iteratively once you have the, the different parameters that you need to compute for every different uh, t step and now the question is how do you initialize these priors right because uh, they are different things so for the um, um, for the Dirichlet, you can simply do some uh, aduan smoothing or something like that, maybe some uh, uniform. For this thing over here, it's a little bit trickier. So one uh, rule of thumb is to do some kappa seed over here to remove this bias of the, of the moose. And then you simply do some data-driven uh, mean. Now for the standard deviation, since it, this is a little bit trickier, you would you want to avoid some uh, uh, instabilities with the data. Then you need to um, select some, some better prior for this. One is simply taking the pool variance uh, feature-wise. So basically you want to take these, the mean of, of each of the features and then remove and, and center the data. And you use this spread as the the initialize initialization of the of your of your prior. Basically, you are just taking the spread of the data feature wise and using that one. And for your new your counts, you just use the minimum one that you you can. So that will be your feature plus plus two. Okay. And this is how you you solve it. You see, now everything is kind of getting into place because you need to use previous information and, and use those uh, distributions that we were working with, and then you just start applying those into more complex um, methods. You can check the the chapter, and this chapter in the book has a lot of of explanations and really nice um, examples. And I really uh, encourage you to go and check it out for for more more examples. Okay. See you in the next uh, session. Bye-bye.